Welcome back, everybody. Today we'll be looking at a, a new chainsaw. Uh, I thought I'd just touch on each of the features. The vibration dampening is excellent on this steel. You've got uh, tool-free covers, flip-out levers, and uh, quite an unusual starting mechanism. Uh, also visible fuel and oil levels. You've got bar teeth on this particular model, steel ones, at a 14 inch depth of cut, about a 35 cc motor, uh, a no tool or chain adjustment. You've got a carburetor heat and a snap off air cleaner. You've got a fuel pump. Uh, really easy to remove hood so you can get into that carburetor area and a single level lever throttle. Not sure I like that so much. Hey everybody, today we're looking at the, uh, or I should say I just bought a steel uh, 211, MS211C chainsaw to replace my old one over here. It's actually a uh, 032AV that I fell a stump onto and kind of crushed it here. So that one's pretty much toast. I didn't need something that big though. I used to cut a little bit larger firewood I'm going to give this one a try. I think in the last, that was a 1985 model or so, or 1979. Let's see what they've done to improve the technology in chainsaws. So steel's done a couple nice things. First, you don't need any tools to work with this saw. First thing you notice, the gas caps. So one of the complaints I read on the internet was that uh, a guy got sawdust in here, and I'm kind of looking at it going, I know that thing looks pretty tight. Well, actually, there is a gap right here. That I suppose if you got sawdust into, uh, it's nice that these things just flip out and you can unscrew them. There's no way you can get this in here wrong. It's only going in one way. they got a string on it now. But there is a little bit of a, a ledge here that, yep, yeah, I suppose sawdust could get into the tank maybe. So that might need a little design improvement. But I like the idea you don't need a tool on this. And the fact that it just goes in there really nice and snaps in place. Uh, it is clear, you know, so you can see your fuel level too. You'll notice in here, this is their new uh, vacuum design that basically throws a lot of the sawdust out of here before the air vents up here into the carburetor. And we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, both the fuel and the oil have the same type of uh, fuel deal, which is kind of nice. Here's their suspension technique, two springs here, which is very nice, very flexible. So it's uh, got pretty good vibration dampening. Got spring here, spring here. The pull start is another kind of cool thing. What they've done is, is when you pull this slowly, you're winding up a spring. It's not really doing anything. And when you pull slowly, it'll wind that spring up so tight and then boom, 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 it starts the motor up. So Here's a good showing of how this easy to start function works. I'm going to, remember there's a recoil spring in here, so I'm going to wind the spring up and then just let go. There it goes. See? That's what it's doing. It's winding it up and turning it over. So if you just yard that out a bunch, it's probably going to turn it over four or five times. Right, we'll try it. A little bit more. So it kind of sounds like this. Ugh, can't do it. There it went. You hear it pop? So that's the way that works and it really works pretty there it just popped all by itself see that so that's the recoil spring actually winding it up for you so you don't have to jerk on it just pull it on out and when the spring gets tight enough it'll start firing it off uh, they've gone away from the button and all the clap trap and choke levers and everything down here to the single lever type deal here and I have not even run this saw I don't even know if it's I haven't started it or anything there's not even gas in it uh, you still have to hold the lever down, hold this down, your throttle, and then I, I guess what you do is you put this all the way down there. This is where you started at, I don't know, and then once it fires, maybe you pull it up here, let it idle, and then once it's running, go ahead and flip it up there. Uh, this one does have the pump here. Uh, you can pump this as much as you want, I guess, once it's full and it's nice, like if you run it dry or like this time, I haven't even run the saw, so there's no fuel in it at all. You can't flood the carburetor with this. It'll just start recirculating back to the gas tank. So it pretty much just gets the fuel in the system. 
chain tensioner. Very nice. Uh, it's got this new lever thing. You just loosen this up. This is literally tight, uh, loosening the nut that holds the bar tight. Give it a little bit of a turn and you'll see that there's a star wheel on top here. You can just back this off and you'll see the chain drop. There it goes. Okay. And give it a little turn back up here to tighten it up. That's really nice. Then what you want to do is just tighten that up till the chain just touches the metal. That's it. And tighten that up. That's a pretty nice little feature considering no tools. One handed. Okay. Uh, the 211, I noticed I was going to get the 170. The 211 does come with steel spikes on here. You don't have to buy those extra. The deal I got, I bought this for uh, 330 Happened to be on sale with a deal where I got the uh, the uh, box with it and an extra chain. And this wrench now stores up here, which is kind of nice. Uh, it did come with a blade case, a blade cover too, before I got the case. Uh, the other thing I want to show you was the underneath the cover, underneath the hood. So the little lever slides in and out here. And I've watched a couple of videos and it's kind of, it doesn't seem like it wants to... Uh, come on and off very easily okay so there it is in and to take it off it's really easy just pull it back lift it up a little slide it back comes right off putting it back on well see as we're in here let's get right to the guts of it the cool part about this saw is this little lever right here let me get a screwdriver hold on right here is the thing that you can rotate 90 degrees like that. Carburetor heat. So if you're out in the steam and cold, actually it says if it's below 50, you can use that. You can turn that over there, and it, when it's idling is when you're going to get carburetor icing. It'll you know it'll stop it from running. So if you keep that in over there, it'll draw heat off of the cylinder head through the carburetor and keep it from icing up. I don't know how many models have that, but that is a cool feature. Air cleaner comes off relatively easily. Couple of clips there. Comes right open. Let's look inside. You know, not much to look at. And there again, you can see your air is filtered up to the carburetor after it's gone through that cyclonic sawdust thrower, I'd call it. Get most of that out so you don't clog your filter up. And when you put this back on, Seems like if you don't get that lever, if this isn't back here, it just doesn't seem to want to go on. It's real easy to get in this kind of halfway position. Get it started. Get those front two dogs in there. Underneath the front two dogs up here. First, just kind of get it slipped in there. Once you're there, see this thing won't come down. Just pull this back. That thing will slip right in there and go forward. Let's get a close-up view of that hood going in there. So here you have your little dogs on each side. And really, once you understand that they just need to hook underneath those little limbs there. And then one on this side. Once it snaps in there, you know it's in. Let's come to the back. Now you notice this lever. If it's not out all the way, it's just not going to go down there. There it goes. See, it just slips right down there real nice. It's right up against the side here. Push it in. Well, let's go ahead and try and start this bad boy. Haven't run it yet, never run it. So we'll pump this until I see some fuel up in here. Oh, that's That didn't take much to get it in the system. Okay, that looks full. So I'm good to go. The uh, lever system here a little weird you this is there's a little straight line and then there's straight lines on here so the little bump on here is supposed to line up with each one of these so there's off run choke or no start choke so in order to get it to go all the way to the bottom you're going to push that down it won't go any farther don't force it you have to pull everything here then go ahead and push that all the way down then kind of just let off everything and continue to put pressure when you let off this stuff. It'll get all the way down to the choke position. That line is 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 lined up now. 
right across from here. Okay, once it gets started, or it pops a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and pull it up here to the run position right there, or the start position, I mean, I'm sorry, start position. Then once it gets running and idling and warmed up, then all you gotta do is click here and it goes up to run once it's warmed up. So let's give it a try. Yeah, let's see. Okay, it's fully choked. Give a nice easy pull. See how that works? Just pull up and it's winding the spring. Pops. Let's go ahead and put it up to start. of gas through here now uh, each tank seems to use about a half of the bar oil reservoir so always bring gas and oil with you when you go and we're gonna get more than two tanks out of that bar oil don't let it go dry uh, this is a great little tool this thing is awesome cut like crazy don't run into dirt that thing just lay that blade on there let her cut I'm gonna show you how this starting thing works it's easy to start feature is amazing my wife is just here starting it so i'm just going to turn the thing on to run it's already warmed up and all i'm going to do is just pull it out and you'll see it'll stop and it'll probably just start you literally pull it and it winds the spring up and then it turns the motor over i i can stop probably here and it'll just go whoop a nice tool I um, thought I'd take a look and see how the oilers doing to see how much crud got caught up in here I haven't looked at it yet so let's go ahead and take this apart <coughs> screw this well that's pretty nice not too bad a little bit of dirt Let's clean up in here a little bit of stuff up in here and I see the clutch here's your gear mechanism that drives the uh, chain tensioner I'm looking at uh, the crud in here On the back side we're looking at the oil fill hole looks like it's got some stuff in it there doesn't look too bad though ah, interesting I'm looking at how this looks like this drive uh, mechanism works for tensioning the chain oh I see what it is this is a spiral this is a spiral on here it's a cam so as you tighten this, it's sliding this along the hole here. You can see it creeping along there as I move that. So there's a pin on the back side that's following that. Very clever. And of course it's driven by the, by the star wheel. Right in here, there's, these teeth are riding on the teeth on the blade. Huh, very interesting. 
So yeah, there's not a lot in there. This looks like it's got a little bit of sawdust in it to be expected. That looks good. Just needs a little cleanup. So when you're cleaning your blade, this is the hole that goes that feeds oil into the groove. I take something like a I got some plastic or something that I'll run down that groove to get any extra sawdust out of it. You gotta make sure that hole's clean when you put it all back together. There's one on the other side, so if you flip the blade over, of course you still have access. And that oil comes out of right here on your saw, right out of the slot. No. Maybe it's out of this slot here. It's probably out of this one here, this little hole feeds into the top of the bar and then squirts out and there's a pump inside there that pumps the oil. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the carb heat. Here it is right here. It's got a little snowflake down there at the bottom telling you to twist it this way. Put a little screwdriver in there. And just go. There's your carburetor heat for winter. It's for summer. Here's the suspension springs. This thing is really suspended well. You don't feel anything when it's running. To open the fuel, let's pick the little lever up again. Give her a half a turn. Pops out. Same way with this one. Oil. Oop, overfilled this one a little bit. That's it. And then that awesome starting system. <laughs> this is this toolless chain tensioner. See, it's hanging loose. Just pull the lever out. This is basically hooked on the nut. Give it a half a turn. Turn the adjusting wheel to tighten it up. It just touches the bar. A retighten of the nut. That's it. Yeah, that's it. This new uh, single lever throttle, whatever you want to call it by steel, I'm not sure I like it, but it seems like the trick is basically uh, this is your lever. It won't go any farther than that. This is the run position, okay? It won't go into the choke or anything unless you pull everything. So what I generally do is so squeeze, light pressure, let off. This little extra click right there is what puts it in the fully choke position once again pull up throttle to run off light pressure let go push down lever up to there here off one more time pull Put light pressure, let off everything as you keep pushing down a little. It'll snap into full choke. Manually pull it to start. Once it pops or fires, get it running there. Once it's warmed up just a little bit, go ahead and pull the throttle to run. Off. What the heck, seems we're really into the uh, nuts and bolts of this saw. And I was cleaning it, I noticed it was making this rattling noise. Well, this washer tends to rattle a little when it's run, it makes a little noise. Doesn't hurt anything. Let's go ahead and take a look at the clutch. We'll just pry this E-clip off of here. That just slips off. Take the washer off. See what's underneath here. Yeah, beautiful. Here's your clutch. Very simple to work on. If you don't know how a clutch works, folks, these things fling to the outside and grab the outside edge of that bucket and in turn it drives your chain. Put it back on there. A little more difficult. I didn't have the right tool. The easiest way to get snap rings back on is a lot of times just with a nose plier.
just like that. I've got to admit, uh, Steel came up with a pretty clever way to make this tensioner move back and forth. Your bolt basically goes through the hole, but you'll see this spiral. And on the back side, this portion right here is, is dented in, and it follows that spiral groove. So as you turn it, you'll see this ring move along the slot, and that is your blade tensioner. It's very clever. There it's at the far end. Spin it around this way, and it's moving to the other end of that thing. It's very clever. And of course that goes on the end of your blade here. Like this. Okay. On the outside of the blade, you can flip it over this way. Just one little screw holds it on. So we'll take another look at that nut. There's your nut that holds the bar on tight. Screws onto there, all operated by hand. This is your adjuster here for your chain tensioner. A little black gear right there is driven on the teeth here. And then you'll see as this thing, the spiral rotates against that stud, the chain tightens up. See, and your little star wheel is just turning it up here. That's how it works. All right, so when I first went to look for a saw, let's go over these features again. I was going to get a 170 series, and I started looking, and first thing I noticed was the caps. They had the just a screw-on cap. I didn't like that. So, went up to the 211, seemed to have all the features I wanted. The toolless caps, the toolless bar adjustment over here, the easy to start functionality. It, does, it doesn't have quite as long as bar as I thought. It's a 14 inch probably max you can get, but remember, with a sharp blade, that's three quarters of cutting. And with 20, 14 inches here, you could actually cut a 28 inch diameter log if it came from both sides. So. You know, that blade size is fine with me. It is a 35cc motor, I think, uh, which is reasonable. You can easily overpower it just by, you know, yarding on the blade. But like I said, a sharp blade will generally cut through anything. The single lever control you're almost not going to get away from on anything. Not a bad improvement. Easy cover to release. It had the winter-summer setting for the carb heat so you don't get icing. I've never had that problem, but now that I know about it, I'll certainly use it. Chain brake, of course. It's nice and light. It's a small size. My other one was, was a little bit bigger. I didn't like that so much. Um, and the fuel pump, so that you can prime it really easily. That was the other feature I, I really liked having. So that's my review of the Steel MS-211C. Thanks for watching.